Welcome to whiskey.com, where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning, and this is my son Ben. And today we're tasting the Independent Malts Collection. This is a collection of whiskies of independent distilleries, meaning that they have not a, a corporate structure, mega companies above them, uh, but they are privately owned and that for, well, from centuries up to 15 years, down to 15 years. Mm -hmm. So these are independent distilleries and this is, I think, the only thing which is in common of those bottles. They come from different regions, they come, they have different styles of whiskey and, well, they are independent, so that's not homogeneous, no? With one you could actually argue that they're now a bit of a big company because they have two distilleries now. <laughs> and, 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 three, and four brands. And four brands. <laughs> <laughs> nah, they're, they're a small family company. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so we have uh, the Glen Farkless of the Grand family. A very, very old family and old in the, in the whiskey business because they have been there since, what was it, 18 something. And uh, yeah, they have uh, ties to other distilleries as well. 36, 1836. Yeah. And then we have Springbank, uh, represented here by the brand of Longro. And then we have Kilshoman with the Kilshoman Sinaik. And they have all in common, they are not from a, you know, a big company, but from a small distillery. A small, not small distillery, but from an independent distillery. Yeah, and they all are 46% ABV, have mm. no coloring, no chill filtration, so they are whiskey as it should be, single malt whiskies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So now let's have a look at the regions where these whiskies come from. Um, first, we have the Gonfaglis. It originates from the space side. Then we have uh, the uh, Longro from Springbank, which is located in the town of Campbelltown, which is officially a region of um, a whiskey region. Of Scotland but we haven't even yeah, put it here in the map because it's a, nowadays it's such a small small region with only three distilleries that we kind of tend to count it to the highlands which is not quite right but <laughs> do it anyway and the last one is then from the Isle of Isla here painted in yellow Let's have a look at the Glen Farkless a little bit more in detail. And it comes from the space side. Interesting is that on the bottle, it doesn't say space side anywhere because they reconcile themselves as a Highland distillery. But the space side is part of the Highlands. Uh, this is questionable. When was the space side as a distinct region was introduced? After 1836? Probably. So probably they stayed with the old uh, classification of a Highland whiskey. Good, good question. How old uh, is uh, the, classification. the classification of Speyside and how old is the Glen Farkless distillery? Yeah, and there is a difference today. Uh, since 2009, there's a new regulation uh, in place where you can add the region in front of your whiskey uh, without the old five regions we had, so Speyside, Highlands, Campbelltown, Isla, uh, Lowlands. So now you can say this is a, well, a, a different place. Mm -hmm. so, so, so that the old distilleries are no longer, uh, well, in a better position to give mm -hmm. more competition uh, to the new ones. Yeah. Yeah. Currently there are 60 distilleries within the Speyside or more than 60, that, that's the way. And yeah, the Spey is a, a very long river with 173 kilometers of length, which is... A little bit better, more than... 100 miles, a bit yeah. more, a mm -hmm. little bit more, 105, 6, 7, something like that. 109. And 109? <laughs> <laughs> Eight. <laughs> and yes, um, now let's have a look at the Glen Farkless distillery. Glen Farkless is a nice distillery because uh, right at the entrance of the distillery there is a bus stop. So everybody who uh, 
every team of uh, travelers who tours the highlands and the space side who can't decide who is going to drive on that day <laughs> you just drive by bus and you're all gonna have some Glen Farkless. Unfortunately the area which is um, for the distillery is very big so the driveway that you have to cross is pretty long <laughs> <laughs> so and at the end of the driveway here you have the visitor center where you get your tickets and then you can visit the distillery and get your tours and inside the visitor center you can get a lot of n very nice bottlings and a lot of distillery bottlings as well and Glenfarclas is Gaelic and means a valley of the green glass and it was founded 1865 by um, was it George Grant, John 36, John 36. It is it, the thing is with with um, Kent Farkless is it's always either George or John. They have a lot of um, names in there, but they are only George or John. Interesting is that uh, the distillery will not continue with George or John. In the future, Georgine or Joanne? No, I've said <laughs> that's not going to happen. <laughs> so, um, but uh, so, sorry, the, I interrupted the family, you. The family doesn't. They, they they don't want to go into public with that because they are too young uh -huh. up until now. So, um, so I uh, interrupted you about the date. So, 1836 is the foundation date of the distillery, but the family bought the distillery in 1865. Oh, so okay. There are a few years in between, 19 years, and uh, no, a little bit more, 29 years. And uh, then there was a bottling several decades ago or, or longer uh, where they said they bought it for uh, 11 pounds something. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And, 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 and the shillings and, and so on. Uh, so this was when the distillery really got into the possession of the family. Yeah, yeah but back in the day, uh, a pound was... Far more. <laughs> it was a pound of silver. A pound, a pound of silver? A pound sterling. It was really... A pound a of silver thing. is like 500 grams, right? So 400 yeah. something or... 500 something? Four, fi four yeah, but it's like... Yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah, a pound of... A pound of silver, apparently. Yeah. So, but anyway, we are here. Keep distracting. <laughs> What's really important about the distillery is what makes it unique, and uh, the distillery has unique a style of distilling, which is a very traditional style with the uh, with the pot stills, and uh, they used to be fired with coal, so direct firing from below with coal. You said about ended around 30 years ago so mm -hmm. all the new stuff is now with direct fired gas fire all so the new stuff is now old <laughs> <laughs> yeah and direct firing is not very common uh, in whiskey distilling anymore they all have the the gas heat exchangers inside the pot stills and even the, the, the coils are not up to date anymore. Now they actually build heat exchangers, just normal Tubes square and ones and yeah. Uh, yeah. into the, the stills. But these ones are fired um, directly from below and that's why it's actually a bit hotter than usual in the still room. Yeah, and uh, you need uh, a turning device which scratches the walls so that uh, the peels, the residuals of the peels of the uh, barley corn did, did, did not, does not uh, fit or clung to, clung, clings to the wall. And there you have a rummager, which is a chain, a metal chain, typically brass, which goes around, but uh, also uh, gives wear to the walls, to the inside of the walls. And the direct fire from the below brings again wear to the outside of the copper. So those pot stills have the double the thickness of the typical pot still if they are directly fired. And after the years, 40, 50 years of operation, then you reach the thickness of the typical marble stills. <laughs> so they are really bracing uh, a lot of copper inside, which should bring more catalytic conversion uh, with oh, the okay. copper. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And with the uh, 
on the right hand side the back right distillery there on the right you see a little bit of a red uh, coloring there the the uh, the shaft of the electric motor which turns uh, inside uh, uh, the rubberger you can see that it's it's turning with a, mm. uh, a, f a few tens of, of rounds per minute uh, that rubberger so it's uh, there's a uh, reduction gear in it uh, so probably it goes around so the shaft turns a few times a minute uh, a few dozen times a minute and the, the rubberger goes uh, well Every 10, 10 seconds. times a minute, yeah. six times a minute, mm -hmm. maybe something like that. Yes, and yeah, but not only the distillation is, yeah, very big thought of at the Glen Farkless, but also the maturation and the warehouses are very iconic. If you look at these pictures, you see why it's called Valley of the Green Grass, and also we did not change the color of the doors. <laughs> and this is just, yeah, a very, very bright red color. And I've talked to them and they have, yeah, um, a contract with a painter. So all <laughs> the doors stay this bright red color. And in you, former times, this was, uh, you had to do that. It was uh, official mm -hmm. so that the exercise men could see uh, where the entrance to the uh, steel house walls. Okay, and yeah, they kept it that way. And also you see, you don't see any very, very tall buildings. The tall buildings to the right is the, yeah, the distillation department with all the stills and all the fermentation going on. The other flatter buildings, they are all warehouses. They're all big stone warehouses with stamped um, floors. So it's the old traditional way of maturing whiskey and that has a big effect on the whiskey that is being matured. Yeah, let's talk a bit about the, yeah, the whiskies from Glen Farkless. You start off with uh, a 10 year old and 40% ABV. So this is kind of the, yeah, the standard bottling for Glen Farkless. And then we come up with the, the 15 that we have, with, that we're trying today. And then there is a there is a twelve in between, yeah. And then you have a seventeen year old in between, and <laughs> then we have a twenty five year old. And um, there are tons of bottles at Glen Farkless with um, yeah with vintages. So this year is one of from two thousand and seven. And there are family cars and bottlings, uh, with <coughs> other vintages, and yeah, there are from the vintages. You have mm -hmm. these forty-six percent ABV as well as cast strength. They have different vintages, and the family casks are a huge amount of single casks and small batch vattings uh, with ages with vintages back into the eighties, early eighties. The 70s, I think, are nearly gone now, and they are really expensive. Those ones, they are all cast strength, have a wonderful wooden box, and in the beginning, they didn't sell that well. Uh, and it was quite difficult to bring them to the market, but today they are selling really, really well, because you know you get these old vintages, and this is a distillery where you can really get them, and slightly to none uh, other distillery is able to deliver that because this is a privately owned distillery which looks after their whiskies that there are always vintages available over all ages uh, where some corporate controllers typically uh, <laughs> drain the <laughs> warehouses very fast to increase the, the in capital inflow and uh, so this is privately owned they look after the whiskey. Mm -hmm. Good. Let's have a um, let's try the fifteen year old. Yeah, uh, there is also a Glen Farkless twenty one year old, of course, and there is a thirty year oh, old yeah. and a forty year old, and uh, they are very rare today, and it's a question where the the best price value is, and we decided uh, to take the fifteen year old 
the ones below the 12 year old the 10 year old are from the distillery uh, in a different appearance they have clear uncolored glass and the older mm -hmm. range the more high class range has brown glass and they are starting with a 15 year old mm -hmm. yeah yeah let's try it there's also um, if you look at uh, from side host there is the 105 and the 105 is a cask strength whiskey with 60 pro uh, not, not proof uh, 60 percent ABV and uh, which is very interesting because it's really a cask strength whiskey with 60 percent ABV so they calculate it and mix it accordingly uh, so the <laughs> the master blender who has to mix it has to blend not just for the taste but also for the ABV because they really want to write cask strength on it because nowadays if you write cask strength on it you, you're not allowed to dilute, dilute it but so you have to you are allowed to mix casks you're allowed to mix casks of course and parts of casks and parts of casks <laughs> with lower and higher ABV so they come out with the 60 and the 105 is the old imperial measurement so a hundred proof have been 57 ABV and uh, every three, every three ABV is five proof. So sixty <laughs> ABV is one hundred and five proof. Mm -hmm. That's only imperial. That's the, not American. The, the British <laughs> way of Im I imperial, said imperial. Imperial. <laughs> yeah, but the the United States say imperial measures as well. <laughs> so it's Do a bit they? confusing. Yeah, I think. Mm -hmm. But they are more practical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is a wonderful sherry matured, full, intense, <sighs> dark fruits, little sweetness, maltiness, massive aroma. And a little aromatic note. That's not really peat, but a little aromatic note, probably from the burnt casks. They're in the layer between the charcoal and the caramelized wood. They're in between. There might you might get some fennels from. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a wonderful um, round whiskey. It has a a nice fruity character. A lot of sherry in it, but also a few fresh fruits in it. So it has a has a bit of a an apple character, red apples, very very sweet, and yeah, I like it. It's it's just a very pleasant whiskey to enjoy. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Full aroma in your mouth, mouth filling, juicy, sweet, a little orange note in it, complex maltiness, and this little, little aromatic note as well in the taste. Massive on your tongue, mouth watering, mouth filling. Yeah, extreme, very good. Mm. It's um, a little bit more intense and a little bit heavier than you'd imagine from the nose. So, where you had fresh fruits like apple, now you have um, orange, orange peel, a lot of sherry. A lot of oak in it as well a little bit of european side note it's it's not a bitter note but i would say a bittersweet note and um, yeah very very nice one mm -hmm. and i've just seen here um i've not seen the 15 year in greater boston i think we get the 17 year instead yes the ranges in the united states differ from the ranges in europe I and think we have Asia, share, yes, in Asia as well. Yeah. We share some of the bottlings, but we don't have the same bottlings. And I think uh, we do have a 17. Oh, yeah. no, we do have an 18. 
Was it an 18? We have an 18 as well, but that is quite rare. But it's I think the 17 yeah. is not meant for the European market. But maybe we do have some from... And the I think the Korean 17 market. has only 43% ABV and not 46. Mm. So there are differences. Mm. If you love the um, Farkless and you ever come to another continent, try the other bottlings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. So, yeah, it's a, it's a whiskey that you could actually give a beginner as well. Yeah. And it's a wonderful, but it's a bit stronger, a bit more intense than the... 15 years, 46%, yep. until filtered. Mm -hmm. This has to be strong, yeah. Yeah, and 100% mm -hmm. Oloroso Sherry Cars. Not first fill all, not all of them first fill, but, but a decent amount. It's, it's quite it dark. It feels like a de decent amount. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. So let's leave Glen Farkless behind, unfortunately, and Go continue to the next, to the next one. Independent. <laughs> so it's all about independent distilleries. Yeah. yeah. We're going to Springbank with the brand Longro representing it. And we have a look at the map and we come to Campbelltown. Campbelltown is uh, a city on the uh, peninsula Kintyre. And when you drive from Glasgow to Campbelltown, it's a very, very scenic road. You can also drive down to the coast and take a ship to Arran and from Arran then to Campbelltown. So, and you have a bit of a research done <laughs> yeah. back in the days. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is more than two decades away, uh, probably 25 years. Uh, and I found a list where all the distilleries in the city of T Campbelltown were uh, given with the date of the foundation and the date of closure. Mm. And there I made an animated GIF file, which you see right now. Uh, do we get it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, here you see this uh, little white diagram where you see the, the 1800, 1900, 2000. Um, and this was just the year 2000, I think, when I made that. And uh, the red dots are the distilleries coming up, and the green one in the middle, that's Springbank. And around those, uh, distilleries are popping up and vanishing, and Springbank now goes away as well. They were closed for a few years, then came up again, and uh, there was a, uh, a guy saying in the chat that there are only two distilleries in Campbelltown left, and no, that's not right. We now have three distilleries working in Campbelltown, but the, the th third one is Glengarry. We're coming through just now. Um, this is also built by the Springbank Distillery, and uh, it's a Glengarry Distillery which produces the Kilcarran whiskey, single malt whiskey. Why that? Because the Glengarry brand is given for a blended whiskey and the company wasn't willing to give that brand away so but they only had the right to use it for a blended whiskey not for a distillery so they named the distillery as it was named before Glengyle. they have the same building they had uh, 100 years ago and uh, all the distilleries or most of the distilleries vanished uh, during pro time of prohibition and the great depression then the dying of the distilleries were there, there in this uh, animated GIF file. Uh, the amount of distilleries dropped extremely, and but and the uh, the, the uh, equipment of the distillery was gone as well. And Glengyle put in used stills and new spirits still and so on to have the distillery working. And in the beginning, they used the infrastructure of Springbank as well. The malting uh, was done at Springbank and then they brought over, I don't know if it, they brought over uh, uh, the, the malt or they brought the over malt. the mash. They do have a malt mill in the Glengyle distillery. Okay, so uh, this was, uh, is then Glengyle and I think uh, we have a picture of the malting, which was not done by us. No, we don't have the malting. Uh, the next picture is Springbank. The next picture is Springbank. Yes, I mean Springbank. Yeah, and I think the picture behind that is the that is Yeah, 
So this is Springbank. You see the signed Springbank on that wall. When I first visited the distillery in 1995, uh, there was no white wall. It was Springbank on a natural colored, natural stone wall. And beside that long row, the whiskey we're tasting right now, and then Hazelburn, and Hazelburn is triple distilled because they have three stills at Springbank. Long Row is double distilled and the Springbank is two and a half times distilled, meaning that they are mixing uh, the second, the output of the second still with the final output of the third still uh, to a 2.5 uh, calculated distillation. Yeah, then Springbank does everything in the whiskey they are doing themselves, so they are doing the malting, they are steeping uh, the corn, they are doing the malting and everything is done by hand. Uh, even putting the whiskey into the bottle is done by hand, so Springbank always is a little bit more expensive than others because there is such a lot of manual labor done in that distillery, but uh, you are having an authentical old made whiskey here. So it's an independent uh, company staying to its, yeah, to the way it's doing business as it's done five centuries ago. For those, not five centuries, five uh, uh, generations ago. Yeah. So next one is typical. Now awesome. we're standing. <laughs> um, we're showing the other whiskies as well. This is a very typical spring bank, 10 years of age. There is a 12-year-old cast strength. There is a 15-year-old uh, from time to time, very rare. There's a 21-year-old, a 25-year-old I haven't seen for quite a while. And uh, I think in the very, very past, there had been a 30-year-old and up to 50-year-old. And now they are now collector's items, extremely expensive. This mm -hmm. is Spring Bank. And uh, here we have this Kilcarran. Uh, which comes 12 years old since a few years now and it comes in a standard liquor bottle uh, uncolored, until filtered as it should be 46% ABV. So yeah, that's it and now we are coming to the long row which is extremely smoky 48 hours over is the malt dried over peat fire. Yes, uh, yeah, the, the long row is the one with only a double distillation and with a lot of peat smoke in it. 48 hours uh, dried on the peat smoke, so this is going to be a, a rough and tough one. <laughs> Here, there's an engravement on the top saying not Spring long row, Spring Bay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have that. There's a the small bottom. company, they do not have the power to have a bottle for ah, someone has already had bad <laughs> bad experience with long grow yes it's just a it's a rough and tough whiskey <laughs> good luck long grow is horrible beautiful extremely smoky yeah right <laughs> it's it's all a matter of taste mm. yeah the long grow red malbec 13 is magnificent but rare as anything um, yeah, from time to time they have special bottlings, they have special casts, they are filling and maturing, and then you have a one time, and that is gone. No? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Greetings from Hong Kong, 3 a.m. Yeah. Mm. So. It's not as bad <laughs> as people say, uh, who do not like smoke, smoky whiskey, smoky whiskey. Uh, this shows for me personally, uh, like a lightly smoked trout. Behind that, a little sweetness combined with a little fresh, very fresh fruitiness. Oh, David Hong, five dollars. Cheers, fan of the channel. Thanks, thank you. Uh, very fresh, sweet in the nose. As soon as the peat smoke is, is faded away by your brain, is filtered away from your brain. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a wonderful peat smoke and it's a a very yeah I would describe it as a as a ham peat smoke combined with a bit of a bonfire ashy charcoal smoke type and it's uh, it doesn't have much sweetness doesn't have any sherry it's just a, a little bit fresh with a little bit of a fresh fruit note. Mm. I would say rather a little bit of a, a citrus note. Some people find that as a pear note. For me, it's a bit too sharp for for a pear, so it's it feels more like a like a yeah like a citrus note. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cheers. cheers. Mm -hmm. Citrus fruit, juicy, and as soon as you swallow, the mm -hmm. peat smoke hits, really mm -hmm. cleanses your mouth, uh, going over your tongue, still a little bit of juicy fruitiness, um, well balanced, strong, strong in the aftertaste, little medicinal, not too much of medicinal smoke, more those uh, trout smoke, <laughs> trout <laughs> smoking <laughs> smoke. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you swallow it, it's n it doesn't have any of the the ham smoke. It it's more of the bonfire ash charcoal, really a rough and tough and. I would say a little bit of a leathery note going on there. Mm. So it's it's really a a strong, peaty, edgy, rough whiskey. It's not rough as in attacking, as in intense, but as in all the the heavier flavors, all the mm, not so yeah, not so young. Not so typical sweet and 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 easy flavors. Yeah, somebody said uh, Teddy KGB, the old discontinued Long Road Ten, used to be very good, exclusively ex bourbon. I would say this one is as well ex bourbon, and they're just filling a hundred casks each year with a Long Road, hmm. and because the sales of the Long Road were that good in the past. Uh, that they really emptied the warehouses so that they now switched over to younger whiskies, which is not that a problem because uh, high peatiness uh, or high smokiness goes well with younger whiskies. So this intensity of younger whiskies match very well with the peatiness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Springbank separating the man from the boy since 1828. <laughs> yes, it's really, it's not a, a whiskey for young people who like, or for people who like it, like candy, sweetness. Yeah, it's, this is very, very, very far from a bourbon. <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, the long roll we're tasting here was first introduced in 1973. So mm -hmm. they started with the extremely peated whiskey uh, not that long ago. I think there was a, a long grow in the Hazelburn distillery. And I think one of the, the distilleries, Hazelburn or Long Grow, um, is now also on their premises as well, but it's their bottling halls. Uh -huh. uh, and what another guy said in the last uh, live stream, and I haven't figured out if that's right or not, uh, but I would just give it here without a, uh, a proof of uh, reality uh, that they. Uh, founded, uh, they founded the Glengyle Distillery or refounded the Glengyle Distillery because the Campbelltown region could only keep their own Campbelltown region when they have more than two distilleries. Three distilleries. Three distilleries. So I can't go with that. Uh, I don't think that's really the case. Uh, but uh, those rules were made with the uh, Scotch Whiskey Association as the main industry body 
and they are looking more for the corporation than for the small independent distillery. So might be true on that side. Yeah. But uh, I have to say, Springbank, everybody knows it's from Campbelltown. If, if they have to ride on Highlands, don't care, we know it's from Campbelltown. Yeah, and, and, uh, he's, here they say peated Campbelltown single malt scotch whiskey. That's okay. And on the back they say single malt scotch whiskey. Yeah. You don't need to write Campbelltown on. We all know it's from Campbelltown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, but we move away from Campbelltown and we move to the Isle of Isla. You can see, uh, you have on the right, you have the Isle of Arran and next to it is the peninsula of Kintyre where Campbelltown is located to the very south. And then you drive up the road and there is a, a port that is called Kenna Craig. And there you board a ship and you uh, take that ship to the Isle of Isla, near either Port Ellen or Port Escape. And on the Isle of Isla, there are nine active distilleries right now. So our Kilhuman distillery is not the youngest distillery on the Isle of Isla anymore. It was founded in 2005 and it's a, it used to be a farm and it's kind of a little bit run as a farm. You really feel that it's a, a family business and yet a lot of workers there, so uh, they do pretty much everything at the distillery. They do uh, their own bottling at the very, very end of the line, and their shipping, and they do the uh, malting, the distilling. They just installed two new stills, so now they have two wash and two spirit stills. And yes, their malting floors, they had to extend the malting floors, just as I was at the distillery in 2015. And they bought a new farm at the, uh, at the surrounding areas. And yes, that means they are growing their own barley. Yeah, Kilshoman is not just a distillery, but also a farm that grows their barley and uses that barley to make uh, the whiskey. They should have put <laughs> blue color on the on the harvester. <laughs> is it always blue color with, with Kilshoman? Yes. It probably yeah, saved in, because in, in, in color because it came in green. Yeah. <laughs> they all come in green. <laughs> they all come in green. <laughs> and uh, well, they have a little bit of yellow in perhaps it's H on deer. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, but uh, they could have photoshopped it. Ah, so when they put a Kilshoman <laughs> sign on it, uh, they could do it. I think they, they well. have written it on it on, on the Isle of Isla. I think that's I think that's not Photoshop the Kilcoman. No, not. They put it really on it. Yes. But, but for this this is an official that's photograph mm. from the distillery. And maybe but I'm a German, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's have a look what there is ah, at the Kilcoman distillery. There's more, yeah. We have the Kilcoman Sinaik, which is a very peaty edition, and we will find that out later. And there is uh, the Kilchoman Machia Bay. And the Kilchoman Machia Bay is uh, very strong on the bourbon with a good amount of Oloroso cask in it. And you have a standard edition and you have a lot of collaborative vattings. And this here is our collaborative vatting. Oops, this one, uh, and it has our little logo on it as well, if you can see. And it has then a bit of a variation between uh, the percentages. And you can even actually order your percentage if it's within the range uh, of the yeah. Machia Bay. And this snake, yeah, here you can see a little uh, gorge where you can see on this side the bourbon, on this side the sherry. And you see there's a little bourbon and a lot of sherry in it. And the snake, I had it a few years ago, a very uh, I'm a friend of this snake, and it's called at a after a bay very close to the distillery, yeah. not too far away. Uh, the day uh, bay is called snake. Is it sin snake? Uh, a little bit more. S something more, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's written somewhere down. Uh, uh, somewhere in here. Yeah. I don't know. Let me talk. Uh, it's snake. Anyway, so this here is the Genesis, and the Genesis is um, 
similar to the Machia Bay with a lot of bourbon, but it also contains 10% uh, Oloroso and also 20% uh, Pedro Jimenez, the very, very sweet sherry. And this is a very modern distillery, being a farm, mm -hmm. but they are far more modern than our countryside is here mm -hmm. <laughs> because they have a QR code on it. And it is NFC enabled here in the middle, the round thing. And we just tried it and really the NFC worked. Mm -hmm. And it loads and it brings you to a website. It's just a link, a website link uh, where you find out more about the bottle that you just have in your hand right now. They all go for your beard. <laughs> <laughs> I actually started growing it with the with the virus, but uh, I wasn't wasn't intentional. <laughs> but it shows you how long it is <laughs> in time. <laughs> <laughs> I let my hair grow as well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, really, definitely smoky, really smoky, giving a full aroma and the sherry is strong. So this is not only smoke, there's more in it. There's this sherry note in it, the fruitiness, sweetness, wonderfully balanced. Yeah, really good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this here, yeah. The other one, the, the long grow, was really focused on the smoke. This here, hmm, is it dominant? Is this dominant the smoke or is it the, the sherry? So it's very, very balanced. So you have a lot of dried fruit, a little bit of an orange uh, twist to it, a little bit of a nuttiness going to it, and a lot of smoke as well. So 50 ppm is a lot of smoke. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here they say snake, named after a weather-beaten headland northwest of the distillery, is a vatting of both sherry and bourbon cast. The high proportion of sherry cast maturation creates a distinctively rich, fruity character balanced with, balanced with citrus, caramel and peach note. Rich layers of dark chocolate, honey, festive spices and ripe fruit infused with the Isla, Isla peach smoke and classic Kilchoman citrus sweetness. This citrus that I had, yeah. Mm -hmm. Behind, mm -hmm. yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Wow. The citrus note is strong. The spiciness is really impressive for that young age. So what cast do they have? And the aftertaste, well, the caramel and vanilla show through. They had to be rel relatively fresh casts, still giving out um, vanilla and caramel, even being sherry casts in it. Yeah. Long aftertaste, mouth-watering, very full, massive, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Very strong on the smoke. I would have expected a little bit less smoke in the in the flavor. And whereas the the nose was more fruity, the flavor is quite hefty, quite strong, quite quite a dark nose. A little bit of leather going on, a lot of smoke going on, a little bit of a bitter sweetness going on, a little bit of a orange, orange peel, orange zest, orange, mm, and strong beet smoke. I like it. So we have a guy from Moscow. <laughs> Thank you for your praise. Mm. Mm. The Sennheim is really good. Yeah, really mm. good. It's, 
but it's it's hefty it's 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 not a mixture between sweet sherry and smoky but a uh, bittersweet sherry and smoky so the bitterness is not too much too strong for me it's not too it's, strong it's, but it's not it's too there. old it's there but it's not that old so that does not have this bitter tannin note some old whiskies have so mm -hmm. it's still a younger one but the smokiness lets you accept the youngness because the smokiness is that dominant in it Mm -hmm. Yeah, so well, good long after there are, there are many whiskies out on the market that go for the sweet and smoky. This is a little bit different. This is bittersweet and smoky. There's a, a lot of character to it, a lot of complexity to it. To it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, ranking. <laughs> yes, ranking. Uh, uh, typically, we do not get a, a big ranking here because uh, <laughs> we are not selling those whiskies uh, abroad. Yeah, in the German um, chat, we all have the, the numbers <laughs> flowing <laughs> through. You're like, mm, a lot of threes in there. <laughs> yeah, and so my ranking comes now. So for me, I have to say those are different whiskies from different regions, from individual distilleries independently owned. And uh, they have all a completely different character, so it's quite difficult to compare them and give a ranking. They stand for themselves individually, everyone, every each of them. Uh, for me, uh, there are two best ones. The one without an, uh, a peat smoke, this is the Glen Fackles, at one of my very best distilleries, and the Snake as well. Uh, and uh, the long row comes in second uh, to the snake because this one has this wonderful sherry cask in, and this mm -hmm. is just bourbon cask. For me, the first one I had the Glen Farkless up ahead. Now I just like the uh, snake a little bit more. Then comes the Glen Farkless and then comes the long row. It's just uh, because I could cope with the, the smoke better when I had it the second time. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a wonderful complex balanced whiskey. Mm, I like it. There's one guy who said uh, Indian or Swedish or whiskey recommendation for Indian whiskey. That's my expertise. Swedish is his. Uh, for Indian, I would recommend you a Paul John. Mm -hmm. um, don't have any particular right now. Don't go for the very for the one with the the older age statements because they are really really fast maturing. Otherwise, you get overwhelmed with a lot of wood. But f except for that, the others, the standard bottlings are really, really good. The older ones, you have to be, the, the special bottlings, you have to get into it. What was that, that Swedish one, the Jökla, Jökla Ruk? No, Jökla. Jökluk. Jökluk. What was, was also good? Hunting luck. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hello from South Africa. Awesome work, gents. Thank you, Gareth Groom. Uh, yeah, there are different long rows on the market uh, which have uh, a Malbec uh, wine finish and the 18-year-old has sherry and rum cask as well. Uh, but they are really rare pieces and they are really expensive. So these whiskies are all affordable. The 15-year-old is uh, uh, slightly below 50. Uh, the long row is around 40. And the uh, snake is, I think, a little bit, uh, also a little bit below 50. So these whiskies are all affordable and they lack uh, the corporate uh, overheads <laughs> which you have to pay with the others and the uh, extreme marketing which is done by the big corporation worldwide. So these independent malls, uh, they, well, they have... Uh, their recommendation marketing. So whenever you find these uh, independent malls uh, well and good, give them a recommendation to your friends mm -hmm. so that the news about these wonderful whiskeys spread yep. around the connoisseurs. Do not uh, go for the big marketing. Yeah. The thing is, if you buy these, uh, you get a good quality and, and nice taste, yeah. but uh, it's not. they are not mainstream whiskey, so you don't recognize them. You not get recognized with your hey that's a such and such and you know the name, 
But uh, this is a Glenn Farkless, and everybody's like, oh, Glenn Farkless, I've never heard of that. But Glenn yeah, Farkless but, is one uh, of the more but, known, uh, well known. In our country, we have a very good uh, distributor, importer of Glenn Farkless, and they did a good job for, I think, 50 years now. Uh, so Glenn Farkless is very well known. Uh, in amongst, Central Europe. amongst the the people who have gotten into the, the world, yes. mm -hmm. but it's not a mainstream that you'd find everywhere. Yeah, no. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. So a uh, little bit of our advertisement for next time before we continue a little bit of our chatter and maybe some questions. Uh, the next live tasting will be an Ament Age. Ament Age is a distillery from Israel. And I was hoping that I would, would have been able to visit Israel by then, but unfortunately I can't travel there. So um, <laughs> we have to do the, the tasting before I was at the distillery. It will be on the 16th of April at uh, 7 p.m. Central European Standard Time. Uh, not 7 p.m., 8 p.m. in English uh, at whiskey.com slash alive. Uh, and, European uh, Summer Time. Some, is it then summertime? Yeah, end of so, March. So what I suggest to you is, because we already had that problem once, uh, don't bookmark the, the date, but uh, actually go to the video, click on it, and it will show you the exact time and date when it will be in your region. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, do you have any questions there? Uh, if you got 50 euros to spend on a good famous single mod, which one would you buy? 50? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get fuck this 50. It's, it's just, just a nice whiskey. I thought it's illegal to carry alcohol. Yeah, well, carry, but not drinking at the distillery. <laughs> why, why should it be legal to carry alcohol in Israel? It has to be co no. It doesn't even have to be kosher. They, they're not the whole country is religious. <laughs> they are very secular over there. <laughs> they, they just have some regions of the country that are very very religious. And even these people, the, the whiskey from M and H is kosher. So uh, even very religious Jews can drink the whiskey because uh, you have to have a lot of regulatory stuff that you have to look at when you want to make kosher whiskey. But uh, they can do it. Uh, good afternoon, guys. Salutes from Guatemala, Central America. Mm. Well, Lingus Mata, which whiskey will be future collectibles? EU Tonus. From these, not not a single one, but the uh, the older ones Maybe uh, from Longro, long the 18-year-old, the older ones from Glen Farkless, the vintages from Glen Farkless. Uh, Kilchoman, you don't, we don't know already. Uh, yeah. Those ones. This one we so if you have a, a date on your on your whiskey, uh, a a year number, they will be interesting in the future. But you have to look at a certain quality level. If you have a, a really, really cheap blend with some little date at the very bottom, probably not rise in money yeah. that much. So and Kirkhoman is still too young. For having uh, a collectible, the first ones they are really expensive today, and if they bring out the first fifteen-year-old, it might be get some money as well. Mm -hmm. Whiskey should be drunk, not collected. Yes, that is also a very legitimate. But comma. <laughs> if there aren't collectors, then you might not buy a bottle a few decades from now where you can go back in time and taste. So the collectors do a good work for the connoisseurs. Uh, <laughs> does kosher improve whiskey quality? I think no, not. It doesn't really It's more or less a regulatory thing. It doesn't really affect the whiskey. <laughs> yeah. It's just, there are things you're not allowed to do. And yeah. Uh, what is both of your favorite whiskey for under 50 pounds? <laughs> Glen Farkless 15 or Glen Farkless 105, uh, even Odinsov, I would say the 15 year old. The 105 is impressive. Uh, it comes in a big bottle. It's affordable and you're able to dilute it. But if you dilute it and uh, let it rest a little bit in your glass, it's not far away from a 10 year old. So the quality in a 15 year old is from my personal point of view higher than in the 105. There are 105s out on the market uh, <laughs> which are old, which have 
20 or 22 years on it and I think they had been a much older 105 and they are really awesome but they are not oh, it's a, it's a 20, year, 20 year old 105 yeah, yeah it's, it's a very very expensive very expensive but also very good whiskey mm -hmm. so great is from Slovakia Thank should you. we should we wrap it up then ah Factor 17 just <laughs> as good uh, the 17 has 43 percent ABV and is not available everywhere so I think it's uh, different on the continents as Ben said uh, so I, if I can't find the 15 year old, I would definitely take the 17 year as well. And I think mm -hmm. from the from the price, uh, they are very comparable. Mm -hmm. There's one behind, yeah, we put it right here. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, there is a 1990 Glenn Fackler's here. And this is my new. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, any thoughts on the Glenn Fackler's 12 year old? Uh, well, it's there, and uh, it's more robust, it's younger, uh, not that mature as the 15-year-old. It's an entry level. It's an entry level, but it's a lot cheaper. Well, yep. That mm -hmm. is a point, yeah. Okay. Should yeah. we wrap it up then? Uh, which is okay. your favorite long row <laughs> release? Uh, well, the long row release. Uh, I found the... The 18-year-old, I found it wonderful, it has sherry and I think a little bit of other casts, uh, whatever that was, in it. And that brought a lot of more balance in it. And I think I also had the Malbec long row as well. So if you have the long row with the finishing in it, then it really rises in quality uh, that steep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're in a, in a questioning, answering spree, yeah, aren't you? I, would, I think we're, we're, we're done now. And uh, uh, you notice I'm only answering uh, questions about these bottles here. So this video is about these bottles. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Next video will be on the 16th of April. Have a look on whiskey.com slash live when it will be available in your time zone. So thank you very much for watching and see you next time.